The body represents a complex yet elegant system that used for simultaneous support, mobility, postural alignment, and forward advancement. Functional loss of mobility at the toe joints can create havoc with the entire postural support complex. Is pronation really the etiology of the things we see when we look at foot and knee and hip and back? Or is it one of several manifestations of stress to the entire musculoskeletal system related to a subtly different origin that happens to be foot related? Take a look at the foot you see in front of you. It's pronated, there's no doubt about it. But look at their shoe. The foot rolls in, but the shoe rolls out. How possibly can that happen? Here's another example of the same phenomenon in a different patient. Look at the foot, look at it from the front and the back. There's too many toe sign. It's clear that the foot is totally pronated. But now in the right slide, look at the shoe. The shoe is totally worn to the lateral side. How does someone pronate when they walk on the outside, not the inside? Now, if we look at this slide, this is a dynamic slide. What happens when she's walking? You can clearly see that her heel is lifted from the ground, but where did she bend? In the middle of her arch. The toe joint doesn't move. That is functional hallux limitus. And when you think about it, it equates to when pathologic or late mid-stance phase pronation occurs at the time of heel lift, not heel contact. And here, if you look head on, what you can see is that as the heel begins to lift, there's a horizontal line right over the medial malleus of the ankle joint. And you could see that as the foot starts to pronate at that time, the medial malleus, which is the tibia, is not rising up. It's staying at the same level. But if you look at the side view, which is in a little box on the left-hand side, you could see that the heel is lifted an inch or two off the ground already. Well, if the heel is rising, but the ankle not moving, what's happening is that the leg is falling at exactly the same speed that the heel is being lifted off the ground. So that's exactly what this is, is that the leg is falling at the same rate of speed that the heel is rising. So in a lot of ways, pronation is an illusion that it seems to be contact related. But when we realize that the limb is falling at the time the heel is lifting, it gives us a, a picture that, that is not quite accurate. Think about looking at the, from the back on the left-hand slide. It looks like the calcaneus has rolled out from under the heel. But when we realize that the tibia, which is what's moving inward, is sitting on top of the subtalar joint, and like I said earlier, it works like a differential gear or like a screw. As it drops, it's going to internally rotate. As it internally rotates, it's going to make it appear as though the heel is rotated out from under the foot, even though the heel has not rotated at all. So why even bother with prefabricated orthotics? What's the intent? Well, it's a lot more than you might think. Now that we realize the effect of functional hallux limitus and how that can cause almost a retrograde pronation that can impact the entire posture and not only the foot but the body above it, what we want to do with the foot orthotic is not so much control motion as much as we can enhance the motion of the first MTP joint. If we can do that, we get automatic arch support via the windlass, we get the ability to raise body weight, and we also get the ability to advance forward all simultaneously. What the orthotic does is it promotes proper first ray function, which is plantar flexion reversion, and will encourage motion to occur when the demand is the greatest.